And so, uh, again, uh, good morning uh, to each and every one. We are uh, gathered here, here this morning because of two main reasons. First, the Memorandum of Understanding Signing Ceremony and the start of the three-day design thinking and technopreneurship uh, workshop. To formally start, let me request everyone to please rise. For the opening prayer to be given by Ms. Ruth Tamonan, CPU CIRAC personnel, to be followed by the singing of the national anthem to be led by engineer Sharon Rose Dumamag, CPU CIRAC personnel. Let us pray. In your presence, O oh God, we gather this morning. We humble ourselves before you, Almighty. Today, you have gathered your elect leaders in this region. We will face intellectual challenges today, Lord, and for these whole three days. But we know, and we know that you are the giver of this. It's not only intellect that you have given us, Lord, but wisdom. So, Lord, as we continue to face and discover things, may you endow us your wisdom. For we know that it's not only knowledge that you desire for all of us but above all wisdom. So here we are today, we open ourselves to you. We acknowledge our weaknesses, but we know that you will feel everything because you are perfect. So thank you for everything. We glorify you, our God, our Father. Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and you, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kindly be seated. Let me now call on Dr. Chidoro C. Robles, Central Philippine University President, for his welcome remarks. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank you all for coming, participating in this very important event. I would like to welcome our uh, guest speaker uh, representing the Commission on Higher Education, uh, Dr. Rex Casipli, a mechanical engineer, uh, who is a graduate of this university. And also I'd like to welcome the representatives, uh, presidents, 
and representatives from our different institutions who will participate in this MUA signing this morning. And I'm happy that uh, we have with us today faculty from the different schools that are our competitors, but uh, competition is different, something else. Here we are going to cooperate with each other and make sure that all of us serve the interest of our students. So we learn from each other and we learn from experts who will be invited to participate in the discussion regarding the topics that we are going to uh, uh, work on. Uh, and we are happy that this is supported by the Commission on Higher Education of the Republic of the Philippines. Uh, since the uh, purpose of this is going to be discussed later, I'm not going to preempt that. I'm just here to welcome you all, and I'm glad that uh, maybe some of you, this is the first time you have visited the university. Maybe some of you are graduates of this university. Um, but uh, wherever you came from, we are happy that we can meet together here and uh, participate in this uh, affair. So again, thank you and good morning. Let me now invite Dr. and Engineer Rexy Casiple, CHED Regional Office 6, Chief Education Program Specialist, for the message from CHED. First, I would like to greet, uh, good morning uh, to our uh, beloved president, uh, Dr. Chudoro Sirbles. This sir is an electrical engineer, no? from a uh, graduate also of this university. To uh, Dr. Raul Moyong, sir, from uh, ISAT University. Uh, a friend also from Southland College, uh, Mr. Villaluz, President of Southland College, and I think the President of Topseya. And then uh, we have also a friend there at the back, my classmate, <laughs> so PhD at the University of San Agustin, Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. George Cortel, the President of Philomar Christian University. To the uh, representative from PhilDev, si Mr. Emil Tapnew, Program Director of uh, PhilDev. And uh, faculty, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Anugane, Danny Molina, no? who made this uh, activity uh, this morning. No? And the, uh, I think the chair of uh, of this uh, center for uh, technopreneurship education, Sirak, no? Sirak. And also have here the president of CSWB, Kita Okina, si Ma'am Dr. Altadegere, no? From uh, University of San Agustin, si Ma'am. So, uh, good morning. Our regional director now is very busy because of the uh, board meeting. Nandito yung ano namin, yung uh, chairman, chairman uh, J. Prospero Idivera. No? May board meeting sa mga state colleges and universities. So, uh, she assigned me to to give the message no, in behalf of the Commission in Higher Education. First, today, Today, most of our higher education institutions still adhere to a paradigm of education that is strictly 19th century, when the teacher does all the talking and students listen and do what they are told. 
With this, educators and policymakers are challenged to adapt a new paradigm of education for the 21st century. The challenge now is to reinvent schools for the 21st century, and this means that we have to make paradigm shift to 21st century education and promote student-centered and facilitative learning approach using the technology applications and other ICT-related skills and knowledge training. This 21st century education encourages learning through students' engagement. Teachers are working with students whose lives have been immersed in a 21st century media culture, where students are literally taken in the world via the filter of computing devices, the cellular phones, handheld gaming devices, iPads, and laptops. They take everywhere, plus TVs and games, consoles at home, and even now, robots. In the light of this paradigm shift, the Commission on Higher Education is implementing major reforms in our higher education system through major curricular changes. We have just revised our curriculum in engineering, no? from a five-year curriculum to a four-year curriculum. CHED is committed to developing competency-based learning standards that comply with existing international standards to achieve quality and enable a more effective integration of the intellectual discipline, culture, and values associated with liberal education. Two years ago, that was, I think, in 2017, the Central Philippine University College of Engineering presented to the Commission in Higher Education for funding the project Technopreneurship Hub, otherwise known as the Center for Ideation, Realization, and Commercialization, or CIRAC. I was one of the panelists during the time, plus the uh, representative from, our, from NEDA and uh, I think from TESDA or from DOLI, from, from the academe. And this is now, this is now the CHED funded project through the Institutional Development and Innovation Grants Program under the five-year K-12 transition period program of the government or otherwise known as the IDIG. The project funded by, by CHED. So uh, we expected, the project is expected to uh, provide the regional standard for technopreneurship education and technology business incubator operations. And today's training workshop is also one way of training our engineering faculty in the region to teach technopreneurship per subject as one of the subjects included in the engineering curricula under the allied courses. No, so you have to know this. No? You're, you're, you are going to teach this subject when you go back to your respective uh, uh, colleges. Technopreneurship is one of the major extensions of entrepreneurship. No similarity, no? Similarity, yeah. Technopreneurship is not a product but a process of synthesis in engineering the future of a person, an organization, and a nation, and the world, a nation and the world. Technopreneurship requires tertiary level and professional development programs and training to produce strategic thinkers who will have the skills to succeed in dynamically changing global environment. No? Traditional uh, educational programs, however, lack the methodology to transform today's students into creative, innovative, visionary global leaders who understand the importance of technopreneurship. Hence, we have this uh, training workshop. 
So I remember uh, that was 39 years ago when I uh, had my schooling here at Central Philippine University. One of our, our projects, no, a special problem, no, special problem, kita ka subject. Our projects during the time was uh, about the rice hull power plant. Because uh, during that time, uh, substantial yung ano natin, maraming palay, mga arosera, and this waste rice hull. Anong gagawin natin dito? We conducted the research, the study, to make this uh, rice hull productive. So then, uh, we designed the power plant, we designed all of this, including the uh, economic uh, uh, expenses, uh, financial uh, expenses, etc. No? But, na asa lang doon? After that, wala na. No. Nasaan ang rice hull? May rice hull power plant dito? Wala. No. Wala. So sayang. Sayang yung design, sayang yung ano namin. No. We still uh, dependent on this uh, oil, uh, crude oil. No? That's why kung sumaka ang oil, saka no presyo. We should have to be independent, no? Para magsaka man ng oil, ganun pa rin ang prices natin because we are not dependent. No? So yung mga non-conventional power plants, rice hull power plants, when we graduated in 1984, nandoon naman ang dendro thermal plant, nandoon sa may Inca, Lambunaw, Iloilo. Kami ang first batch sana ni train sa Pangasinan with Dr. Lena. Alam si Dr. Lena, San from San Agustin. Recruit kami ni uh, Mr. Provido during the time sa Iliko 2. Ready na kami to go to Pangasinan for a training sa Dendro Thermal Power Plant. Kaya, approved na ng board. Kaya nag-gera na ano na yan, uh, Power, people's power. In 1986, na-down ang economy. Wala na si Marcos, wala na si yung ano natin. So wala na. Nawala na rin yung program. Sinundog na mga NPA yung mga makina doon sa Lambuna kasi maraming NPA. So what I mean, I would like to know is that this is important. Design thinking. You design a machine, design what kind of a plant, and after that, we have to to convert that no into, into what we call the actual operation. No? That's why uh, I uh, I was uh, impressed, no, sa Sirac, the Center for Ideation, idea, realization, realize nato ng idea, and commercialization, commercialize the this output. So that's it. So we missed that in the last three decades. And we're going to implement that in the future through this technopreneurship. Our students will design, will convert that into commercial, ano, kanilang design, no, to market, pwede nila ma-market through this technopreneurship uh, subjects. No? Because engineers, engineering is a broad curriculum. Wala, wala pwede tayo mag-teach, pwede din tayo mag mag employ sa government, broad tayo. But sa entrepreneurship, parang wala tayo. We don't know how to market our products. So that's why this very important course, technopreneurship. So with this, I uh, would like to congratulate uh, Central Philippine University, College of Engineering, for this project. I'd also would like to also to thank the Council of Engineering and Architecture Schools for the cooperation. Kasama rin ako sa grupo, sa chat. <laughs> Maraming cooperations from, ano, uh, from the participating schools. Nagpadala kami ng tatlo, padala kami ng apat. I am happy to know that, no? And uh, we also said to us, Danny, Dan, nasaan yung memorandum natin? Okay, so, so the invitation was there. We, we drafted the memorandum signed by the regional director just to support 
also this uh, project. So thank you, mabuhay, and uh, God bless. At this time, um, also from uh, the talk of uh, Dr. Casiple, goodbye, 19th century paradigm, and adopt the 21st century paradigm for education, the use of technology, innovation, and technopreneurship. Exactly the point and the aim of our activities today until Saturday. So thank you, Dr. Casiple and shed for the support. At this time, let me request Mr. Emil Benjamin Tapnyo, Field Dev Foundation Program Director for his message from the Field Dev Foundation. Thank you, sir. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Bagising, uh, nagising pa. So, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Robles, um, Dr. Melina, Dean Molina, and the various university presidents and college chains who are present here today. So, my name is Emil Tapnyo. I'm part of Philippine Development Foundation, or PhilDev. Um, okay, let me just give me a few, huh? Okay, so, we've been hearing the word technopreneurs or entrepreneurs, but... Um, what do you know exactly about the word? So some would say they create new industries. Some would say they provide jobs. Some add to national income, create social change for social entrepreneurs. They say increase productivity, generate foreign income, develop communities, and alleviate poverty. So ito usually ang naiisip natin when we talk about technopreneurs or entrepreneurs, right? But what set them apart is actually um, their entrepreneurial mindset. Okay, and uh, how do you, an ano bang ibig sabihin ng entrepreneurial mindset? Ako, I always say that in Filipino, the simplest way to describe entrepreneurial mindset is pagiging madiskarte. Um, so th that's how I always uh, talk about it, pagiging wise, pagiging street smart. But in this manner, uh, entrepreneurial mindset means uh, creating something to result to something, okay? Um, Technopreneurs, they see reason, uh, they see opportunities. So if you notice, there's two comparison of uh, how a normal, typical businessman would think, and the other one is how an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur would think. So they would say, pag, business, pag businessman ka, you would have a, um, this causal reasoning, and if you are an entrepreneur, uh, you would have an effectual reasoning. So if you notice, dito sa entrepreneur, when they look at different means, it would yield them to different opportunities. They don't see thing, one thing as uh, isang paraan para lang sa isang product na gagawin nila sa isang, sa isang, sa kanilang enterprise. So that's, that w that's what sets uh, an entrepreneur uh, different. Um, they all, they're also comfortable with risk. So hindi naman, hindi naman ang mga entrepreneurs, when we talk about technopreneurs, hindi naman sila sugarol. However, they are expert risk mitigators. They see themselves as problem solvers. All right, and lastly, they're not afraid to fail. The road to success and failure to them are one and the same. Because when they fail, they will always bounce back and do something about it. Okay? Diba usually pag tayo pa nag fail, parang ah, ayoko na, whatever. Iba, iba na lang gagawin ko sa buhay. Para sa kanila hindi. Pag natisod sila, bango nila sila. Okay? And I'm sure you did you'd, you'd hear about this story repeatedly sa mga entrepreneurs. Um, if you look at this, this is actually the brain, and diba tayo, uh, there's always uh, uh, what we say, the left and the, the right hemisphere. For most entrepreneurs, they're able to blend the creativity and the logical aspect of their uh, thinking. And uh, they say that 81% of entrepreneurs are happier w than when they were employees. Wait, for the record, I'm not asking to be entrepreneurs, ha? Huwag yun naman iiwan yung universities nyo. But what we're saying is, when we encourage students to become entrepreneurs or take, or take the road to entrepreneurship, this is one aspect for them or this is one possibility for them. So they get to uh, pursue their passion. Um, diba tayo, uh, growing up, we were, uh, we were told na, oh anak, mag-aral ka para makatrabaho ka sa ganitong kumpanya. However, what we want for them is to open uh, the possibility that, anak, 
makapagtapos ka para magkaroon ka ng sariling kumpanya. Okay? So there's the two different things. So they're able to also pursue their passion at the same time, enrich themselves and the people around them. Next, and they can work how they want, when you want to. Okay? This is just a graphical rep representation. Ha? I'm not saying that they're going to do this. But what I'm trying to say is that for entrepreneurs, they have more time for themselves, supposedly or ideally. But uh, they get to pursue their passion without the, being not bound with what's the typical 8-to-5 job. But unfortunately, most of the startups, they fail. And this is the reality. Even if we want to say na, hindi, maiging successful ka, even if we train them, the reality is that a lot of them will also fail. That's why what we're doing here uh, in CP, what we're doing in Serac, is to increase the probability that startups will not fail. So, um, and just to clarify then, while we're encouraging entrepreneurship, we still want our students to finish school. Okay, I know and daming magandang ideas na ah, si Mark Zuckerberg or kung sino man hindi sila nakapagtapos. But in the Philippines, uh, it's ingrained in, in our culture uh, to finish education. And we don't want to lose sight of that ideals. In the Philippines, there are still 21.8 million Filipinos who live below poverty line. That represents 21% of the 104 million Filipinos. Sabi nga ni Catriona Gray, 104 million Filipinos, and 21% is such a huge percentage. So from PhilDev's perspective, or from the way we look at things, we think that entrepreneurship is the fastest way to diffuse wealth among Filipino people. So it is a guaranteed way to achieve inclusive economic growth, benefiting everyone and not just a few elites. Ito yung laging sinasabi ng chairman namin, si Dado Banatao, na ang entrepreneurship is an opportunity for everyone. Okay, you can be an entrepreneur even if you are in non-urban areas. You could be an entrepreneur if you are uh, in 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 the barrio. You could take advantage of what you have in your locality. And um, the way we look at uh, entrepreneurship uh, in our tech hub project, what you want is to actually strengthen your regional strengths. So at PhilDev, uh, we are a non-profit, and uh, we are a non. Uh, well, we believe that. Uh, we can help alleviate poverty through education, innovation, and entrepreneurship. So for PhilDev, we've been in existence in the Philippines since 2013, but our roots can be actually traced to the U.S. Um, from Philippine and Philippine Americans who put up the Philippine Development Foundation. So um, the way we look at things, or our strategy is that if we uh, capacitate the education sector, it enables them to create innovations based on their researches. And out of those innovations, you could create technology-based or technology-enabled enterprises. And collectively, it would help the Philippines um, reach broader inclusive economic development. So if you notice, this approach is very simple and it is very pivotal, wherein the higher education institutions are actually in the forefront. You are in the middle of it. Because for education, kayo dun sa inyo nagsisimula. And for the innovation part naman, this is something that uh, I'd like you to look at. Anong na, uh, so my question ako pala sa inyo before I move forward. What's in between education and innovation? Anyone? You're very familiar with this. You're very familiar with this sa College of Science or sa College of Engineering nyo. Anong in between ed education and innovation? Wild guess. Dali, ano? Research, exactly. Okay? What we're trying to teach here is that let's not stop at research. Let's take the next uh, move forward. From the 1990s to the mid-2000s, a lot of HEIs have been focused in instruction, in academia. And from mid-2000 to now, ang focus natin lagi is research, research, research. But what's the purpose of research? Diba? To prove that we're good? No. If we are to research something, it has to be made useful. And that is when you create an innovation out of it, and eventually if you can make an enterprise out of it to benefit more people. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, our mission is to uh, eradicate poverty, and uh, you could do this. Uh, and you could do this uh, by improving the nation's economic performance and to improve distribution of wealth across uh, all classes. Um, 
so what we say is that to be able to do that, we need to produce technology-based products for global market and to create a robust entrepreneurship ecosystem. So again, as I mentioned earlier, the HEIs are at the forefront of it. You know why? Because the HEIs will strengthen the pipeline of enterprises that will go in the market. So we have a very pivotal and inherent role in uh, this target. Um, to be able to, to go to that, we need to educate more scientists, develop more research labs, learn to commercialize technologies, develop tech-based entrepreneurs and uh, ecosystem support, and to help reduce red tape and obstacles. Next. And uh, together with the government, academia, and the private sector, we aim to create programs to take these goals. If you notice in this caption, may kulang dito actually, all right? The government, the academia, and the private sector. Sinong kulang dito? The community. So we need to do what we need to not forget is to always include the community when we plan, we're planning out something. In the same manner that sa PhilDev, even if we're saying na uh, uh, we, we want to uh, alleviate poverty through education, innovation, entrepreneurship, however, we always say that the center of what we're doing are the social enterprises or the startups. All right, tayo kunduit tayo to create that. So uh, these are just some of the projects that we're doing at PhilDev. So right now, ESIP is our project with UNDP, and that is to support social enterprise in the Philippines. Next. Among the things that we created at PhilDev is actually ERDT, or Engineering Research and Development Technology, one of the long-time projects of the Commission in Higher Education together with eight universities. So our chairman, Dado Banata, was actually the one who proposed this, which currently is already being uh, uh, supported by the Philippine government uh, since the mid-2000s. Um, also, we're doing uh, a scholarship program with the Shell Foundation. So we're supporting 100, uh, over an average of 150 scholars, uh, engineering scholars nationwide. We're also doing CloudTop. This is actually a project uh, with the then uh, Department of Education, just currently under procurement, pa den, and that is to put internet connection in all uh, basic uh, education sector. And uh, next is Picari. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this. This is a Philippine-California uh, research uh, uh, institute or a partnership between Philippine and California universities. That is for joint research. Next. Um, the IDEA project, which we implemented for USAID from 2013 to 2017, this was actually the precursor of the Technopreneurship 101. So just a bit of a background. When we were implementing the IDEA project, it's Innovative Development Through Entrepreneurship Acceleration, we brought in uh, 26 visiting U.S. professors in the Philippines. They were scattered all over the different universities. And the common thing that was recommended by this visiting professor is to create a technopreneurship subject in, in engineering sector. So we work with the universities in two, uh, with the Commission on Higher Education since 2015. We submitted a uh, course outline. Uh, it was approved by uh, the technical panel and eventually in 2016, it was approved to be part of the new engineering curricula. So for you guys, uh, to, uh, just, for, just for appreciation, this Technopreneurship 101 came about from the need of a Philippine university. This is not because we just want it or because Chen think na you need this. This, was, this came from uh, the need of um, Philippine universities. So Tech Hub, this is, uh, Tech Hub is actually the CRAC, all right? I'll talk more about this later on. And uh, also, there, we're also uh, doing other projects with USAID. Next, next, next. Okay, so Technopreneurship Hub. So just to clarify, Tech Hub is our collective term for all the Tech Hub universities nationwide. And the idea is to spur innovation and entrepreneurship in various regions in the Philippines by having uh, the HEIs as the entry point. So back in 2000, 2013, we were discussing with Shed, sabi namin, how can we spur innovation and entrepreneurship uh, in, in various uh, regions in the Philippines? We thought it, the easier would be uh, private industry, but then we realized that the private, uh, the businesses are very volatile. Misa nawawala sila, misa nandiyan sila. And one thing that we realized na, uh, ano ba, na common or andyan lagi are the universities. So we thought that you'd be the best could do it uh, to do entrepreneurship for, um, well, the area, your locality. And lastly, again, to strengthen the pipeline of uh, startups in the Philippines. So this is our photo of our MOU signing back in 2014. That's the then chair uh, of, of CHED. Uh, the lady with the curly hair on the left, second to the left is the head of USAID. And that's Dado Banatao, yung naka white na long sleeve. So that was the start of formalizing our partnership with CHED as far as 
institutionalizing entrepreneurship in the Philippines. So this is the Tech Hub Network. Um, if you notice, CPU is andon, sa pinaka left. Um, basically, when we create Tech Hubs, we look at the distribution of universities uh, in your locality. So um, in right now, uh, we have, oh, we're targeting uh, 15 Tech Hubs, but right now the established ones are still 10 pa lang. So if you look at uh, the way we plot it, so in the Northern Luzon, uh, servicing Ilocos Norte is Mariano Marcos State University, Cordillera and Region 2 is SLU. Uh, for Central Luzon, that's Central Luzon State University. In Manila, we have uh, UP Diliman and De La Salle University. Uh, and in Southern Luzon, that's Batangas. And in Bicol, there's uh, Ateneo de Manila. So in the Visayas region, the first tech hub was actually University of San Carlos. But we realized na sobrang hirap i-gather ang mga universities, especially that you are from different islands. So we created two more. One here in Central Philippine University to service um, the Western Visayas region, and one in Eastern Visayas State University for the Eastern Visayas. For Mindanao, these are the tech hubs. So um, just so you know uh, what's uh, inside tech hub, um, the design thinking workshop is just one of the many activities of uh, the tech hubs uh, in, in, uh, here in Western Visayas. So CRAC, you'd be expecting uh, a regular contact from Dean Molina and Sir Bernie asking you to be part of this, okay? When we created uh, the, the, the tech hub project and um, when, when Chad approved of it, it was implicitly, sorry, explicitly uh, agreed that while the Tech Hub project will go in CPU, the agreement is that it will affect the neighboring universities. So, kumbaga, entry point ang CPU. But if, uh, really, you'll be involved in, uh, in this. What we want is to foster collaboration, and that's very important. So, these are some of the activities that uh, we'll have. The CIRAC uh, stands as the incubator that we're developing here. We're also going to strengthen private and public linkage. Uh, we'll send uh, professors to the U.S. for benchmarking and see and bring in trends, best practices in the Philippines. Uh, we're also going to develop technopreneurship learning materials because, as you know, Technopreneurship 101 will already be implemented, but there's really a dearth of resources when teaching the subject. As much as possible, we don't want to rely on Silicon Valley, on uh, Singapore ex uh, or call this experiences, because malayu siya sa mga Pinoy, eh, di ba? Instead of inspiring the students to be entrepreneurs, ang mangyayari, ma 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 papag aspire lang natin sila. They will think that ah, ang layo na nila, di natin sila maabot. That's what we want is to look at local experiences that would make them relatable sa kanila. And lastly, we also developed uh, Technopreneurship Track Development. So Technopreneurship Track is, after taking Technopreneurship 101 um, during second year or third year, they would be able to take several subjects right after it and to formalize or concretize whatever businesses that they think of when they had Technopreneurship 101. And lastly, this activity on the lower right hand, this is something that we're still waiting from Ched. The faculty training on entrepreneurship this is very important, okay? Next. So I know you're all familiar with the whole outcomes-based education, the whole OBE. So Technopreneurship 101 actually is one concrete example of being an OBDized subject. So the course outline that you already have, or I think you've already received it, we've already OBDized it with uh, the technical working group on um, technopreneurship. I was, I'm, I'm part of the, the TWG Sached, representing the private sector, so we took it upon ourselves to obedize it para when we cascade it to you guys, it's gonna be easier. So this is just a simple mapping of uh, what are the outcome, expected outcome of each activity and eventually what outcome it leads to, um, uh, especially in the uh, uh, PDP. Next. So that's it. Uh, I hope you learned something new. In the next three days, you'll be hearing more from uh, my teammates from PhilDev. They're amazing. They work for a long time with startups. So when we talk about design thinking workshop, this is not just conceptual thinking, but this is, these are born from their respective experiences with accelerating and working with uh, various startups in the Philippines. So thank you so much and good luck. Thank you, Sir Emil, for the information, facts and figures, challenges and hopes for the technopreneurship in the Philippines.
And so now we proceed to our Memorandum of Understanding Signing Ceremony. So in this fast-paced, competitive world we live today, never has the demand for continuous innovation and sustainable entrepreneurship been more momentous and significant. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we will now have the Memorandum of Understanding Signing Ceremony. And so we are pleased with the presence of everyone for the signing of the for the signing ceremony of the Memorandum of Understanding between CPU and partner universities. So I would like to uh, acknowledge and invite now all the guests, the presidents, or the representatives, and the witness from each higher educational institution uh, to be seated to their assigned seats as uh, we will begin our signing ceremony. And so let me acknowledge our partner HEIs for the MOU signing, starting with CPC, Colegio de la Purisima Concepcion, Rojas City, Capis, with retired Reverend Monsignor Cyril B. Villarreal, the Rector and Director of Academic Affairs, and we have the representative from CPC, Father Vincent D. Bernas, the head of the external linkages and internationalization. And we, can we ask uh, for another witness from the HEI to stand at the back of uh, the representative of the president to uh, witness the signing. Next, let me uh, acknowledge CPSU, Central Philippine State University, Cabangkalan City, Negros Occidental, with Dr. Aladino C. Muraka, President. Next, we have, next we have CSA, CSA Bacolod, Colegio San Agustin Bacolod, Bacolod City, Negros Occidental, with Father Andres P. Bayatola, President. Next, we have from Fellowship Baptist College, Cabangkalan City, Negros Occidental, Dr. David V. Garganchel, the President, who will be represented by Engineer Rosalind Kyukson, Faculty of the College of Engineering. And we have from Northern... Uh, from NIPSI, Northern Iloilo Polytechnic State College, Estancia Iloilo, Dr. Maria Teresa G. Palmares, the president, or uh, her representative. Next, we have St. Uh, SAC, St. Anthony's College, San Jose Antique, with F Reverend Father Edion R. Febrero, the president, uh, who will be represented by Dr. Analinda O. Santos, their vice president for academic affairs. Next, we have from SC, Southland College, Cabangkalan City, Negros Occidental, Dr. Juanito Z. Villaluz, their president. Next, we have STI, WNU, STI West Negros University, Bacolod City, Negros Occidental, Attorney Monico V. Jacob, the President, and will be represented by Dr. Erlene May C. Hatino, the Dean of the College of Engineering. Next, we have from TUPV, Technology University of the Philippines, Visayas, Talisay City, Negros Occidental, with Dr. Jesus Rodrigo F. Duterte, President of TUPV. And we have UA, University of Antique, or his representative. Uh, University of Antique, Sibalum Antique, Dr. Pablo S. Crespo Jr., the President, and representing him is Engineer Cheryl Salvan, the Dean of the College of Engineering, University of Antique. Next, we have UNOR, University of Negros Occidental Recoletos, Bacolod City, Negros Occidental, with Reverend Father Don H. Besana, the President, uh, represented here now by Dr. Owen Martier. 
And we have USA, the University of San Agustin, Iloilo City, with Reverend Father Frederick C. Comendador, the president, represented here now by Dr. Feli Altalagiri, the dean of the College of Technology, University of San Agustin. And some more we have from uh, ISAT U, Iloilo Science and Technology uh, University, La Paz, Iloilo City, with Dr. Raul Muyong, President. And I might as well acknowledge USLS, University of St. Lasal Bacolod, Bacolod City, Negros Occidental, with Dr. Annabel C. Uh, Bal uh, Balor for their president. And so these are now the uh, partner HEIs who have uh, acknowledged and who have uh, uh, partnered in our memorandum of understanding signing. And of course, last but uh, definitely not the least, or did I miss uh, any school who, uh, any school who is present today? Okay, and so last but not the least, of course, the host university. And so uh, CPU, Central Philippine University, uh, with Dr. Chidoro C. Robles, our university president. So may I request uh, the presidents or the representatives and then the witnesses. So each school, can you, uh, uh, can you uh, send uh, another uh, representative or person from the school to stand at the back of uh, the president or the representative. Uh. Oh, sorry, I missed, correct, thank you for the correction. I really missed uh, FCU. And so uh, let me call on uh, FCU Philomer Christian University, Roja City Capiz, with uh, Dr. George O. Cortel, their president. Thank you for the uh, information. I really missed the FCU. And so, sir. Uh, so. Uh, Thank you, and so you may now sign every uh, page of the MOU document, and there are three sets of three pages each, and so there would be nine pages and nine signatures all. So the MOU that they are signing uh, formalize the is the formalization of the strengthening of collaboration and cooperation between CPU and partner universities in the fostering of regional innovation and entrepreneurship. So key points on the strengthening collaboration and cooperation among HEIs through the CPU Technopreneurship Hub or CPU CIRA, specifically in collaborations on the development of Technopreneurship 101, instructional materials and workbooks, and Technopreneurship track in the engineering curriculum. And so everyone, therefore, is encouraged to take full advantage of the opportunities offered by this new partnership. And so for the, our HEIs, so uh, the development of Technopreneurship 101 learning materials, the uh, development of the Technopreneurship 101 track, and the engineering faculty training on Technopreneurship 101 are some of the points of collaborations in the signing of our Memorandum of uh, Understanding.
and so has uh, everyone already signed and so let us give now a uh, big round of applause and congratulations uh, everyone And so once again, to our guests, the HEI presidents or their representatives, and then and the representatives, thank you. Uh, we still have some uh, uh, documents being uh, signed, so we will await. And so we are glad to report that uh, all over Western Visayas, the HEIs are represented from uh, Panay, uh, Iloilo, Antique, Capis, and uh, uh, hopefully for Aklan. And then uh, from uh, Negros, we have uh, lots of partner uh, HEIs. And so once again, to our uh, guests, our HEI presidents uh, and representatives, thank you for uh, gracing our signing ceremony with your presence. We now invite our guests, the HEI presidents, the representatives, uh, Dr. Casiple, uh, Mr. Emil Tapnio from Fieldeb, and then Dr. Chidoro Robles, uh, to please uh, go downstairs in the dining hall for some refreshments. From different um, universities, and meron hindi pa magakakilala dito, so we try to do that now. Okay. So meron ang tawag na activity pala natin is human bingo. Sino na nakapaglaro ng human bingo? Ayan, meron na. So, sige, let's try to make this interesting. Sige. Um, get one and pass yun na po, sir. Ay, baka kulang. Sige. Get one and pass na lang po. Sige, ano ba? <laughs> Okay. Sige, write your names muna and then yung university nyo. Okay. So may konting ano tayo dito ah. Meron bang nasama? <laughs> Notes dyan. Ay, ayan. Sige, sige. Ah, sige, write down your ano na lang muna first, your name and university. Tapos, tatayo tayo. Kailangan natin makihalubilo sa mga tao. Mm. Emil said, our colleague Emil said earlier na 90% of startups fail. Uh, according kasi to CB Insights, it's a research firm, uh, they said that uh, most startups fail because they produce products that no one wants to buy. So with design thinking, itong particular design thinking na to, we're going, it's going to be human-centered. So all your designs will be customer-centric. So right from the start pa lang, you already know that someone will, will be willing to buy this and someone is interested in using your products that you will develop. So, yun. So, hindi, hindi ko na siya i-continue kasi si Micah na pala yung gagawa. No, hold on. Sige, introduce ko lang si Micah. So, Micah is our entrepreneurship um, mentor, uh, our, our mentorship manager, and he, she's part of the um, all-women-led na entrepreneurship team ng PhilDev. So, uh, she also serves as a chapter director for the Startup Grind Manila, and she holds shared rights to Angel Hack and Pecha Kutsa in Manila. So, kung ano yung Pecha Kutsa, siya na lang po yung tanongin nyo. 
So, prior to joining PhilDev, she served as an associate founder of A-Space, where she helped grow the organization to what it is now, which is a leading co-working space in Manila and Cebu. So, please welcome Micah. Let's go. Mayong Aga! Hello everyone! Um, when Sasa actually invited me to do a design thinking workshop here in Little Itoilo, I was a bit excited because my mom's hometown is in Bacolod City, so I understand Ilongo and I can speak a little as well, so you'll, you're in safe hands. Um, so what we're going to do today is for the workshop or for the session, so we'll have a bit of discussion and then after that, we'll have an activity and then go back to discussion again and then activity. So we'll make it as interactive as possible. Are we cool? Yes? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so human-centered design thinking. All right, so what is actually the purpose of us doing this workshop today? So what we want for everyone is to have a hands-on experience in learning human-centered design. That's why our format is we discuss, we do an activity or workshop between your groups, so we'll group you guys later, and then discussion again. So this is what we'll talk about. So we have what is human-centered design thinking? Of course, it's very important for us to define and understand what it is. Next is an overview of human-centered design thinking process, how it's done, and then making sense of real-world observations and challenges, solution-based brainstorming, and of course, we'll do some prototype and testing later. So you'll have some materials that you can play around with. So there. Um, what is design thinking? I'd like to ask for a volunteer to help me read this one, since it's on the screen. Naman. Anyone? Volunteer? Professors? Ma'am, sir? Wala. So I'll just choose one. Kung wala. Hi, ma'am. Hello. So what is design thinking? Design thinking is a methodology used to solve complex problems and find desirable solutions. A design mindset is not problem focused. It's solution focused and action oriented towards creating a preferred future. Design thinking draws upon logic, imagination, intuition, and systemic reasoning to explore possibilities of what could be and to create desired outcomes that benefit the end user, which is the customer. All right, thank you. Amazing. All right, so as what is defined to be design thinking, you don't focus so much on the problem, but you think of a solution to that problem. For example, you have a challenge or you have a gap. What can you actually do to be able to bring it to the next level or fill that gap? So next is there. So in design thinking or human-centered design thinking, it's not just simply creating a solution. You have to think of this innovation trinity. So the innovation trinity will tell you, okay, so is it something that people desire? Is it an actual problem? Is it something that, for example, I have a problem with my Tax. So how do I actually file my tax online, etc. and whatnot. So those are the type of problems that we want to solve. And then, is it viable? So how can you actually execute that problem or actually execute that solution into something so it can be a business as well? And how feasible it is, is what technologies are available to be able to carry out that idea. So we're going to flesh that out more later on. And then, so how do we apply design thinking? So we have product services, spaces, and systems. So a sample of the products is, this one is a ThinkPad. So where you can actually draw. This is for the creatives or the artists. One of the problems that the artists, illustrators, or creatives has is that when they draw on paper, it's very hard for them to transfer it into something digital. So 
what we saw is someone made a trackpad where they can draw and it goes straight to the computer, so it's digitized already. So that's one problem that they were able to create a solution of, and it's more efficient or it's easier for the illustrators, designers to make graphics. That's why if you watch, um, let's say, Avengers or all the movies right now, it's very high tech since you can digitize most of the illustrations that you guys have. And then next are services. So one example of a problem, or let's say a gap that Filipinos have, or a worker, for example, freelancers, is filing tax, right? So one of the services that you can do is actually to automate it. Um, so one startup was able to automate the filing of taxes per individual. So that's part of the services that where you can actually apply design thinking. You saw a problem, you saw a gap, you made a solution and be able to execute it. And another are the spaces. So for the spaces, we, a lot of people realize that cubicles don't really work as much for innovators, for creatives. That's why there are different types of spaces that evolve. So we have the co-working spaces, we have the creative hubs, we have even art galleries for the artists, and for universities, you have the university-based tech hubs. And then we have some systems that are created out of a problem as well. So does any of you wonder why the keyboard is actually QWERTY, UIOP, and it not, not A, B, C, D? Who knows the answer? Okay, so the history of the keyboard is that when the first people who invented the typewriter, so it's very low tech during that time, right? So they made it to A, B, C, D, you know, the usual alphabet. And people typed really fast because they memorized the A, B, C, D or the alphabet. And when people start typing really fast, there were multiple jams in the typewriter because the technology during that time can absorb everything right away. So they have to find a way to make it um, slower or to slow down people in typing. So they created the QWERTY IOP keyboard that we now have. And then it was adapted all throughout, you know, generations already. And that's, you know, the history of the keyboard that we currently have. So those are the type of problems and systems that people create in order for them to adapt the, the current technology or what we have. Yeah. So another case study that we have are the premature babies in Nepal. This is actually a good example that Sasa shared with me. So in Nepal, um, there are 80,000 babies that are born prematurely every year. So that's every year. Um, and then, of course, if you're born premature, you have to be in an incubator. But in Nepal, there are different provinces as well, right? Different cities, islands that you have to go to. And it's very hard to transport an incubator with a baby inside since uh, the infrastructure is not as, let's say, advanced. Um, so what happened is that there are students in Stanford who actually invented this. So they call it Embrace. Um, and then it's a very adaptable incubator um, for babies. And it's very easy for any one of you to carry a baby around. And it's like being an incubator because in, in an incubator, it's like, you know, giving warm or an embrace to a baby. And then, you know, until he or she gets into the maturity stage. So that's an example of a big gap in the community that these Stanford students were able to address by creating this one. They call it Embrace. Now, so what are the five phases of design thinking? I'm sure most of you are familiar with this, but we'll do a quick review. So the five stages, so we have the empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. And then we'll have more activities about that later on. Um, on the empathize and define part, it's actually how you understand the customers or the community, the society, or the people. And then on the ideate, it's when you start creating something out of it. 
And then deliver or execute is your prototype or testing. But if you would notice, there's a linear approach to it. Okay, you'll start with empathize, next step, and next step. But along the way, you have to return to either define or ideate again or empathize because there's what we call feedback or improving the prototype or the product and services that you have. So what does it mean? It's also there. So empathize is usually the first stage of the process where you get to know your customers, your community, and then define is when you gather all your findings. So also do an activity about that later. Ideate is when you brainstorm. And this is very important because you have to list all of the ideas as much as possible that you have that will actually solve that problem. And then a prototype is something exciting. That's when you start creating the actual or the sample products or services that you will give out to your customers. Let me know if I'm going fast so I can slow down. Are we still good? Cool. And then test. So after prototyping, you have to talk to your customer, right? So you have to test it. Okay, is the product actually working for you? Or you have to test it yourself if it's health and sanitation, right? Is the product actually safe? Is it sanitized? Is it not harmful for everyone? Is it secured? And then when you get the feedback, you also have to go back to define again. That's why if you notice the design thinking process, it's linear, but it also loops back in and out because improvement and innovation is very important. Now, uh, what's the difference between solution-based and problem-based thinking? Um, a lot of us would always think of the problem, oh yeah, it's very hard to study, it's very hard to commute, but how do we identify it wherein we're solution-based, right? So, okay, maybe how can we or how might we be able to make things more efficient? So this is the sample of design challenges. So usually you start with how might we question. So on the left side, you would notice that it's the problem or the opportunity that you have. So for that one, it, for example, is the company culture or experience has room for improvement. But in design challenges, how might we improve the culture of the organization to make the team happier? So you focus on the organization and you focus on the people that you actually want to serve. And then, so another problem is government licenses, applications be easier, the design challenges. How might we streamline the government licenses application in the Philippines to be more efficient? So you have to make it more specific and what are the needs of the people or you as human beings as well. Because you also have to think that if I'm a human being, I'm in, I encounter this type of problem, then maybe my colleague has the same problem or maybe other people has the same problem. There. There. So for the first activity, um, it's very easy. Uh, we want you to discuss and choose one design challenge per team. Um, Sasa, how many teams should we have? Ten teams. All right. So what we'll do is we'll count to ten, right? So ten, and then uh, we need at least four people in the team or in a group. And then the next thing that you will do is don't think of the solution yet. Just think of the design challenge that you want to choose from this one. So how might we reimagine the travel experience in the Philippines? Or how might we improve the health of Filipinos? Or how might we create new ways to improve the learning habits of our students? So these are the options that you have. Um, and please write it down on a piece of paper because we'll have activities later on that we'll, you will actually need to you know, circle down to your design challenge questions. Good. Yes? No? Are we alive? Are we sleepy? Hungry? Yes? Hello? May I? Okay, so let's count. Maybe we can start here. One to ten. Oh. Nine, ten. 
three. Nine, sir, ten, one, eight, nine. We like one more person? Oh, there's one more. So ten na siya. All right. So let's group ourselves together. Um, and then you have to actually sit with them for most of the day, right? So let's do one, two, three, four, five, up to 10. So we'll start through here. Find your teammates. One to, one to 10, yes. So it depends on what design challenge actually resonates to you more. Cool? So we'll let you do the discussion. All right, so we have the empathy, we have ID8. What's the third one? Oh no, we have empathy, we have define, we have ideate, and the fourth is prototype, and last is test. Okay, so now let's dig a little deeper on what empathy is. So as defined, um, empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Or in other words, it's also like putting yourself in another person's shoe or shoes, if the law allows. And then, of course, connecting something in yourself that knows that feeling. Um, all of us experience something different, but at the same time, we have to get something inside of us that can actually relate to what the other person is going through. So that's what empathy is about. Now, if we're talking about design thinking, how can we actually relate more to our customers or to our community or clients? So how we do it is that we have some interviewer tips for empathy. Uh, what we want to do is we want to start with, you know, simple questions. You want to get to know your um, interviewee, uh, where they are from, what they actually do. You know, simple ones just to add profile to who they are as a person. And then the next one is, of course, avoid questions that's easily answerable by yes or no, because you, it's going to be hard for you to expound or for them to expound or explain what they're going through later on, okay? And then next is focus on specifics. So like, tell me about the last time you, so that's an example, and then state an example or an experience that you want to know. For example, um, if you chose design challenge number three, that's about the learning habits of the students, then when you talk to the students later, you might want to ask them like, okay, when was the last time did you actually study? How was your experience in you know, reading the materials that were given to you by your professors? So those are the samples. And then, when you actually do the interview on, or when you're talking to someone, don't try to solve the problem right away in front of them. Try to hear them first. Because if you're solving the problem right away with them in front of you, it's like, okay, so we can do this, we can do that. It's not really empathizing with them or listening with them. It's, you know, suggesting something already. And this is very important. Um, take down complete notes, behaviors, challenges, motivations, quotes, anything that that person or your interviewee is actually talking about because you will be able to use it as a reference for the activities that you'll have later. And then the most important thing, I like this. So as an interviewer, uh, it's only 20% talking, so you ask the questions, but 80% listening. So you really have to understand where they're coming from. That's why it's 
empathy, right? Ay, nagta-time out. Yeah. So, for, so we have the interview tips already, and you know the meaning of empathy. So our next activity is for you to prepare questions that are in line with your how might we questions, or the design challenge that we're able to choose. And then choose just one interviewer from the team, just one, and then the rest will be note takers. Please take note the note takers have a very important role because you want to capture all of the data, all of the things that your interviewee um, is sharing with you. And since it's inter interactive, we encourage you to go out of the room or you actually have to go out the, of the room. So if your design challenge is number three, then you have to interview a student outside. Um, you have to at least interview one. We don't limit you to one. If you want to interview at least two or three people, then that's okay as well. So you gather a diverse um, thoughts or mindset from the students or the people that are around you. So that's your next activity. Group three. Okay. <laughs> group three. Oh, um, group one. That's in group one. Group one. Group one. That's in the. I. Sahara. Possible. Sahara. Group one. Pass mo na si group one. Mm, pressure yan, ha? Group seven. Very creative to si group seven. Five, six, seven, eight. Group seven up. <laughs> group seven up. Pwede naman. So, may ocho derecho. May group seven up. Merong group three. Galing. Very creative nating lahat, no? Design thinking. Ay, anong group tayo? Group four. Group four. Wala pa din. Ang tagal naman ng cheer. F4? How about this group? Game? Game. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. 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 Hey, hey. Ay. Oh, papatalo ba kayo doon? Cinco, cinco. Hey, hey, hey. Next, group six. Asan si group six? Ay, ayaw magsalita ni group six. Ay, wala pa din. O sige, we'll come back to the rest of you later. So for now, um, so what you guys did is you went out, right? And you were able to interview students and other people. All right. So who chose the design challenge number one? Raise of hands, design challenge number one. And design challenge number two. We have a few. Design challenge number three. Dame. And then we have someone who created their own challenge, right? So what group was that? Design challenge number four, though, said so you did? Okay. All right. So we'll start with group number two, right? So what were the challenges when you were interviewing someone? Or what's the most difficult thing, empathizing? Is it, let's say, crafting the questions? Or is it actually looking for someone to talk to and trying to empathize to them? I think siguro yung isa sa mga challenges namin uh, when we are looking for someone. Kasi um, we are thinking of those people that are 
that have lots of experiences or travel experiences. So, but at least nakakita kami dyan sa baba. Kasi kanina, masyadong malakas yung ulan, hindi kami makagala. So, we try to convince one and uh, at least paano na-convince sa namin na, na to, to, to have her time para makapagsagot sa mga questions namin. All right, thank you. So I can volunteer. I can, you know, give you some information. I love to travel as well. Um, and then for the sign challenge number two, I saw someone who raised their hand here. Nagturoan bigla. Sige, group seven. Since maganda yung cheer nila. Group seven. What was the most difficult part for you? Ay, andun pala si seven. Group eight. Uh, uh, group eight. Asa eight tayo ngayon. Ocho derecho, di ba? Number one, the rain. So we have uh, choose the uh, design challenge number two. How might we improve the health of Filipinos? And the challenge that we encountered during the interview was nagtuturuan yung mga interviewees namin, ma'am. So, pag sinabi mo siguro na uh, we will be interviewing someone or sinigaw mo, tapos magtatalikod na lang sila lahat, tsaka maglalayo sa'yo, ma'am. O yun, nagtuturuan yung mga interviewees. Kung sino yung i-interviewin. Thank you. So for design challenge number three, we actually have a lot of people who chose that design challenge, right? So how about this group? You chose design challenge number three. So, oh, you created the other one. All right. So what were the challenges for either interviewing or crafting the questions? Mini, mini. What kind of... Uh, one of the challenges that we have encountered is uh, the weather condition. And of course, we thought that our question was easy because we will be interviewing an instructor also, but we found out that we have to interview someone not included in the seminar. So we went to the College of Engineering. All right, thank you. And then for design challenge number three, you chose number three. Right, okay. So, any insights? Good morning, everyone. Uh, basically, we don't have any problem sa uh, pag-interview namun. It is because we were very lucky because sa namun na napili was actually very eager yung magsabat sa mga question namun. So, basically, we only have a problem sa pag-craft sa questions. But then when it comes to sa gina-interview namun, wala yung problema. Great, thank you. I think you were able to pinpoint the right people. Awesome. All right, so that's about it for the interviewer for the empathy side. And then after this, what we're going to do is we're going to tackle the empathy map. That's why the notes that you have are very important since you'll be mapping it out on what do your customers say, feel, do, and other things. And then the next thing that will happen for this session is actually my most favorite session. It's lunch time. So <laughs> if the lunch is ready, then we can actually go at the back. And if you want to interview some more people, then feel free to do so during lunch time. Again, for the travel group, I'd be happy to give you some more information and maybe Goldie and Sasa as well on this side if you have some questions as well. Good. Thank you. Enjoy your lunch. Oh. <laughs> Drawers, you can look at the screen now. <laughs> okay, na. Uh, okay. Sige. Uh, <laughs> uh, enough na. Sasara ko na to, ah. <clears throat> 
Okay na. Congratulations, guys! Ito na yung pinakamaingay yung ano, activity ever. <laughs> Top mo yun, Maika. Okay. Sige. Can I get uh, two volunteers para isang drawer, isang um, taga-explain kung ano yung nag experience nila? Dito sa side na to. Ano pong, ano tayo, kayo yung nag explain Yes, you're the one explaining. Ano po yung, ano natin, anong feelings mo nung nakita mo yung illustration? It's quite hard to explain or give instruction, especially uh, the drawing is quite complicated to draw kung wala siya, ano, if hindi ka gita mo, ano, ma-instruct ka lang. And what do you feel, sir, nung ano, nakikita mo na mali yung dinodrawing ni sir? Um, it's okay. I, I think our drawing is mirror-like mirror, mirror -like na drawing. So, reflection sang... <laughs> reflection sang picture to ang amon niya. Sige, confident tayo dyan, no? Kita natin, ah. Sige. Okay. Other side naman po. Okay. Sino po yung mga nag-draw dito sa side na to? Si ma'am. Oh. Ma'am, ano po yung, ano, ay, wow. <laughs> ah, ano, ma'am, yung feel, ano yung nararamdaman natin? Ano yung naiisip mo nung nag explain si ma'am na kung... Ano ba yung nakikita niya? Actually, uh, I just trusted the directions. And if hindi ko maintindihan, uh, I just asked ma'am to repeat. And so far, okay naman. Medyo slow but sure. And what did you feel naman nung nas nakita mo kung ano yung, is yung illustration? Sayang hindi natapos tama sana. <laughs> Tama ba? <laughs> oh, sige. Ah, 3D. Ano yung instruction nyo? Kasi 3D siya. Pero yung drawing kanina, linear. Ano yung ano? May kulang. Ano yung instru instructions ba? Nasa dulo ng room yung, yung lalaki. Tapos nasa harap yung table ba to, ma'am? Table siya. Oh, sige. Okay. Any other thoughts po? Violent reactions? Wala naman. Oh, sige. Review ulit natin yung, yung ano. Pag nakita nyo, ano siya? Ano yung nangyayari dyan? What do you think it is? Ha? Huh? Tamad siya. So, ano siya? Remote control, di ba? Di ba? Di ba pag tinitingnan natin siya, i-explain natin from left to right or right to left. Pero sometimes when we're in it too deep, we don't step back and look at the big picture. I can just say naman to my partner na it's a remote control. I just said, explain what you see. I didn't say, describe what's going on there or what's happening. You can do that, di ba? So, yon. And then, linear. So, minsan yung mga instructions natin, no, kailangan very detailed pala. Kasi kung hindi nakikita ng mga, ano natin, students natin or ng partners natin, kung ano yung nakikita natin, iba yung perception natin. And like, kila ma'am, 3D yung kinalabasan. Ayun. So there, yun lang naman ang after lunch activity natin. And feel free to use this to your students. Maganda activity siya, di ba? So yon, Maika for the empathy. Ma yes? No? Yeah. Kay isang aga, kahipo sa inyo tanan after sang activity sang lunch, ha? Sa just sa jagged ka matulukon. Ah, ah nagiilong ka na ako ulit. Okay. All right. So our next session will be about the empathy map template. So earlier today, you were able to interview someone, right? So some 
most of you guys took notes of what they said, what they feel, what they're doing, and whatnot. So for the empathy map template, or the notes that you have from the interview, you have to map it out this way. So how do we do it? Um, for the empathy map, it's actually a tool used to visualize the customer's needs. So what we want to happen is that we want to remove the bias from our designs and align the team on a single and shared understanding of the user. Because sometimes if you empathize too much, you'd be very focused on that person and not really on the needs and the solution that you have to do. And then, of course, discover the weaknesses in your research. So if you discover that there are weaknesses, you might need to go back and interview another person or dig more information later on. And then the next is uncover user needs that the user themselves may not even be aware of. So that's the purpose of the empathy map. And the last is to guide you or guide us towards the meaningful innovation. There. So for the empathy map, we have four components. So the first one is what do customers say? So it contains what the users say out loud in an interview. So it's going to be easier for you for this part since they, I'm sure they said a lot of things, right? And then the next one is what they actually do. Um, it's about the actions that the user takes, what physical actions. So how does the user go about doing it? How do they respond or react to it? And then next is think. Um, it captures what the users think throughout the experience and what occupies their thoughts actually you know what's going on in their minds so and then feel how they actually feel because what you say what you do and what you think is still different from what you feel um, there's a rational mindset and then there's an emotional approach or like reaction to it as well so if you do this or if you do that does it make you feel safer or do you feel more, let's say, is it more convenient for you? You feel at ease? So that's the feeling side. Now to give you an example. So for example, this is Jenny. So Jenny is a single mother of two. She works 40 hours a week, enjoys spending time with her family and friends. So for example, I interviewed Jenny. Or Jemmerlin. <laughs> um, and then I tried to map it out based on the interview that I had with her. So the first one that Jenny said is that I love spending time with my family and friends. I enjoy what I do at my job. So these are quoted, um, quoted words from Jenny herself. And then I'm tired all the time. I can't take care of myself anymore. So that's what she's saying. But what does Jenny actually do? So she goes to work from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. and then pay the bills, buy groceries, do a lot of chores, especially on the weekends. And of course, she also spends time with her children. But what does she think about this? So she thinks that she's spreading herself too thin. Maybe that's why she's saying that she's tired, right? Or I, she doesn't think that she has enough time to take care of everything by herself because she's a single mother. So that's what she's thinking. And how she feels is that she's very worried that she's not fulfilling her duties to her family, the company, and herself because she thinks she's spreading herself too thin. So that's how you map out the interviewee. So, and then by mapping out the needs of the customers or how they feel, what they say, what they do, is you be able to define what they actually need. So for Jenny, what she needs is that to lessen the daily chores or to have it more, or to be more efficient, so for her to have more time for her family, friends, and herself. So the solution or the idea would probably be, okay, what can we do so Gemma, Jenny would have a more efficient um, time to be able to manage for her family and the work itself. Yeah. So, and then the next activity comes. So the activity is for, them, for you guys to 
do your own empathy map. I think you have Manila Papers. Yeah? Oh, okay. So we have Manila Papers there. Uh, first one is fill out your empathy map. Create a more specific, how might we statement you saying this format? So earlier today, you have your own design challenge, right? But based on the customer needs or the people that you interview, how will you be able to make it more specific to that specific person that they interviewed to address the needs that they have? Understood? Okay. All right. So we have the Manila papers on here. So if you have questions, um, we'll be going around and guide you through the empathy mapping. Oh, you have 60 minutes for this one. Um, so what we're going to do next is we'll ask five teams to present in front. Um, do we have volunteers? Do we have volunteers? If we don't have volunteers, I'll pick here. Yeah, you want to volunteer? Okay, group one. Awesome. Oh, my cheerleader that. This is Goldie, by the way. She's a very energetic person. <laughs> Who's presenting? Are you presenting? <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. Okay, moms and sirs, no? We are from group one and we are going to present our output for this afternoon. So for let's say uh, empathy, no, according to the faculty that we have interviewed. Now, I am a faculty of civil engineering with seven years of ex uh, teaching experience, and I enjoy teaching. For the do, no, handles a mostly engineering major subjects, uh, uses technology in teaching, example, PowerPoint presentation or whatever, uh, gives exams to students, applies outcomes-based education, class, uh, classroom level, siguro. So for the think, no, Instruction is composed of 70% OBE and 30% traditional uh, teaching. Teachers adjust to the students. Uh, know your students first to identify best teaching strategy. K-12 graduates lack essential, essential skills no? required for engineering. And for the field, no? 21st century engineering education uses technology-based instruction. Teachers act as a facilitator of learning. 90% of the work should be done by students and 10% for the teacher. So for, for our, ano na tawag? to be specific, no, for our statement, how might we help engineering teachers or instructors no, improve their teaching strategies in this 21st century engineering education? Okay, that will be our presentation. All right, thank you, Group One. So, Group One actually made their own statement. So, they didn't choose from the three design challenges. And yours is How might we help engineering teachers improve their teaching strategies in this 21st century engineering education? It's actually a good one because the education or training everywhere in the world is continuously changing. Good. So next is group six. You may take this out since we'll be needing it later. Group six. Ani yung cheer natin alat sa group six. Ah, wala. Ad.
Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, our group, Group 6, actually, is a heterogeneous group. I say heterogeneous because we're composed of five different fields. Uh, yours truly is a chemical engineer. Uh, we have one from University of San Agustin, which is a computer engineer. We have one from Philomer Christian University, which is an electronics engineer. We have one civil engineer from uh, Central Philippine Adventist College and one industrial en engineer from West Visaya State University. So our work was based on the design challenge number three. So to recap, the design challenge is uh, based on the question, how might we create new ways to improve the learning habits of our students? So our group uh, interviewed five students. So four were senior high students and one uh, med tech student in the first year. And we decided to have two guide questions in order for us to be able to really capture uh, the would-be uh, answer to our problem or design challenge. And the questions that we have framed are as follows. So on the positive side, we ask them, what do you think would make you love learning more? What do you think would make you love learning more? And then on the negative side, what do you think hinders you from learning? So these were our two questions. And based on what was asked in a little uh, a while ago, uh, somehow similar to a Juhari window, as I mentioned to our group. So on the same part, these were their varied answers. So uh, on the negative question, on the, negati on the answer to the negative question, so these were their answers. Um, don't mind our penmanship. They say no wise man writes well. <laughs> so it says here, uh, they have difficulty learning because number one is some students are struggling with family problems. Sometimes they have difficulty concentrating because they're undergoing personal and family problems. Then, of course, this can be negated, the financial challenge of having to go to college today and parents having to support their children. Also, uh, going to universities like this one. And some are self-supporting, so they work in order to be able to go to school. So this hinders learning. And some are distracted because of social media. I think everybody would 100% agree. And there was one who said that I, cannot, uh, I have difficulty learning primarily because of the teacher. And some have difficulty managing their time. I think it's related to this. Having to work, uh, juggle work uh, related challenges and academic challenges as well. Now, so as to what they do, so some are, this answer coming from a senior high student uh, having hooked on social media. Then having to travel long distance from home to school is a challenge as well. And balancing, they, they have now a, a problem with balancing social and academic life. So they have to balance their social and academic life. And of course, having to uh, connected with this is because they are self, they are self supporting. Now, as to how they feel, so, Generally, if this is what they say and this is what they do, this is how they feel. Uh, if the odds are not in my favor, I will have difficulty learning. I think uh, for most of us, uh, um, belonging to what they say, Generation X, if the odds are not with us, we are more challenged. I think my, ang mga kaedad, kundi guru, mag-agree sa ako, nga sa una, the more kang nagkakachallenge, yung engineering student, the more kapag, that you, the more that you are more challenged and motivated to go forward, toward your goal. 
but it's different now with the students that we are catering to. And we have to really think of ways on how we'll be able to address this one and even make compromise. Now, so as to what they think, so they think a teacher should be inspiring. I remember in one of the educational training I attended to, in tertiary education, it was said by the speaker that students should know that it's not anymore the teacher who is responsible for their learning. They know the direction that they ought to go towards too. And they are not to wait for inspiration to land on their lap that way they will like to learn. They have to because they have to be motivated already. But sad thing is they still think that the teacher should be inspiring. And then they think that they should be able to balance this, that they should, and they are entitled to a social life. So you will agree, I think most of you will agree that the generation now have this self-entitlement thing with them. They are entitled for this, they are entitled for this, they are entitled with this. We are to understand this. You are to teach us which part of the book is this. Before you are not taught. You have to manage on your own. But we survived, right? Here we are. And then... Uh, they think that they need to focus on the goal. For there was one student, though, on the passage, to end this positively, said that to keep himself inspired in spite of his or her challenge is he has to refocus himself always on his goal. Hambal niya, kay gusto ko gin makagraduate, madumduman ko lang akinala, makagraduate ko. Gabalik ko sa dapat ko, nga ubrahon ko, ano gin ubrahon ko. So I think I need to focus on my goal so that I keep learning and I keep working on to finish school. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. And then do we have another volunteer group too, right? Okay. Can we, bo oh, thank you. Wow, ready na siya. I would like to ask the support of my group mates. Support now, so cheer. Group to cheer. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so previously, uh, before we choose the topic that we want to have our discussion. We try to consider all the possibilities. We have number one, the traveling experiences. Number two is on health. Number three is on students. We, as much as possible, we don't want to have or to discuss with the students because that's quite, uh, kumbaga, ano siya. Uh, we have lots of uh, experiences. In order for us to be out of the topic, we try to consider what is uh, not common to all of us, and that is uh, on traveling. Kasi pag teachers tayong lahat, and we consider students, they're somewhat like there is always a bias in, in what we are discussing, in, what we, in the output that we'll be going to present. So we choose the traveling because, uh, of course, all of us want to travel. And uh, to set the tone, we have this uh, uh, story. We have Miss M. Miss M, or shall I call her Miss M? Miss M is in her about early, uh, early 50s. And she wants to travel in and out of the country. We cannot find somebody nga dito siya nagta-travel. So, sa, of course, she travels dito sa country, but most of the experiences that she tells or she told us, 
is about going out. So therefore, we consider the international experiences as well as, of course, the challenges that she had. We have a company of three in the interview, but only one is answering the question. Because uh, I think in most of their travel abroad, kasama silang tatlo. So, isa lang yung nagsasalita. Now, she said that uh, she is always traveling in and out of the country with her friends, kasama yung family at the same time yung mga students niya. Kasi, uh, he or she is one of the in charge ng tour ng mga students. The second is, uh, sabi niya, going to, uh, during the travel, communication barriers is one of the challenges. Of course, nilagay din namin yung sinabi niya kasi that is what she feels. She also feels that there is some communication barrier because in going abroad, you meet uh, somebody or persons with different languages. Uh, more likely when we talk about communication, we do it orally or in terms of sign languages or signals. But there are also cases that we have this print. Nakalagay lang yung print na ganito, we cannot uh, read it because it is written in a different language. So either we, we write here, she also feel that communication and language barrier. Kasi naranasan niya, na feel niya. And of course, uh, she said that there is insufficient information regarding the procedures in the terminal, especially in airports. If you go here, what's next? And so on and so forth. And then, uh, she also said that uh, they experience some delays, of course, most of the time. The flights are delayed. And However, of course, uh, when they go out of the country, they like food, no? especially sa Japan, sir, uh, sa Hong Kong, and so on. They like the food. However, before going out of the country, they have to pass the, the terminal, which is the Naiya. They said that it is over-congested, sabi nila. So, while, uh, in, in doing the travel, they do save and prepare for travel expenses. Example, sabi nila, um, if they are planning to, to go to Israel, they have to spend about 150. So, from now, two years from now, they will be going there. So, ngayon pa lang, magsisave na sila for that purpose. They also have to, or before the flight, they have to follow up the travel requirements as so, so if maybe uh, kailangan ng visa or ng passports or whatever authority or permissions coming from their university. Also, they have to, kasi sabi niya, nakarana sila ng na-hold sa immigration. It's not in the immigration here in the Philippines, but in the immigration outside the Philippines, dun sa, pi sa pinuntahan nila, they were hold because of somewhat like mistaken identity. So they, they do verify what is happening, why they were held at the immigration of the other country. And of course, even though they have this, this experience, Nana hold sila sa immigration, they do enjoy the travel. They also guide the students while in the tour. And of course, they have to communicate with their previous students. Kasi sabi niya, uh, may mga nag-sponsor ng kanilang trip. So, that, of course, um, 
it can be gleaned na kung may nag-sponsor, they communicated it ahead of time. And of course, they do adjust to the culture change of other, of course, coming from Filipino going to either Hong Kong or Japan, the, the, the culture are different from ours. Now, going to, ano ba yung na think nila? They think that uh, they should be optimist, to, optimistic enough that there should be no problem to occur before or during the flight. However, of course, uh, also they feel that the travel will be secured. Kasi pag pumunta sila sa, sa ibang countries, yung security is more uh, strict compared sa atin. Also, they think na na-hold sila sa immigration, they think that they have violated something. And then, they also think that since they have this, all of these uh, experiences, they think that traveling cost is worth. No? Kahit ilang thousands pa yung na, nagastos nila, but they think that it's worth because they experience the culture, they learn uh, something regarding that or about that country. Also, they think that because of the congestions in the NAIA as well as the insufficient information given in for transportation, usually for transportation, they think that they that uh, there must be some improvement in the immigration systems as well as on the procedure and guidelines for travel. And also on the feelings, they feel that since they enjoy the travel, they are they feel that they are satisfied. No? They are satisfied of the travel. However, because of the holding in the in the uh, immigration, they feel that they are threatened. So Although they think that they are the travel will be secured, but they they experience it, so they feel that they were threatened. And that's it. Thank you. Great, thank you. So well, ready, ready, Okay, next group. Your group, group ten. All right. So, do we still have one more group who wants to present? We can take in one more, but we'll time it five minutes for this group and for the next one. Do we still have one more volunteer? No more? All right, so you will be the last group to present. Good afternoon, everyone. I am the representative of the group 10. Now, um, the design challenge that we have chosen is all about how might we improve the health of Filipinos. The question is, why this, call, uh, why this design challenge call our attention? It's because of the UHC bill or the Universal Health Care Bill, which just signed into law in last March 14, 2019. And now it's already called the Republic Act 11,223. That's why um, we want to discuss about the health issues that our um, country is uh, are having today. So now, for the say no, we have the second quadrant here. The first, the second, the third, and the fourth. For the second quadrant, hey. So we have number one. Um, our, uh, before that, no. Our respondent is a security guard. He's already 12 years in, ser in service here in Central Philippine University. So first day, number one, I was a smoker and an occasional drinker. And then for the do, he quit smoking. But in addition to that, um, uh, when, he uh, when he graduated in high school, he stopped smoking. It's because um, he already observed and feel that 
uh, within his body, no, na he already feel the, I know, the negative effect of having smoking, like you have a difficulty in your breathing. Next would be the, uh, for, he th for the thing, no, it's better to spend money for food than in vices such as smoking. And then for the feel, um, since he already quit smoking, um, he feel confident that he is already healthy. Next, for the say, um, he said that he have uh, health insurance, and for the do, um, he, exer he exercises uh, every week, like jogging and playing basketball. And for the thing, no, um, I guess this is due to, I uh, know, um, he lacks of education when it comes to the health program of our government because he said that he thinks that his health insurance is only for his beneficiaries, that he is not covered by that um, program, uh, the health program of our government, which is the field health. And then uh, he feels so worried because he may not be covered of that insurance, that's it. And then for the last one, for the same, um, I support the laws of the government regarding no smoking in public places. And for the do, he convinced others to stop smoking because he already knows the, the consequences when, when, you, uh, when you continue to smoke. And then for number th uh, for think, no, for which is uh, in relation with the uh, say number three, he thinks that even we have an existing laws which prohibits us to smoke uh, cigarettes or drink liquors, people will continue to buy cigarettes and liquors as long as they are available in the market. So the only thing that we can stop those kind of vices if those um, products are not available. Like, say for example, bawal ang, ano, ang drugs, but people will uh, make a way uh, kahit na mahal, mahal siya, as long as it is available, they will really find a way how to have that kind of product. And then number f uh, for the feel, no, last, improved mental, emotional, and physical well-being. So thank you. Thank you. So that's our last group. Yeah? Wala nang pahabol. We all good? Amazing. Okay, so after the empathy mapping, I would assume that most of you understand your customers or your interviewees more, right? Yes or no? Yeah. Like for example, for group two, they were uh, they were explaining that most of the problems that the interviewee of the interviewee is actually about the airport travel when they're in Aia, the congestion and the communication barrier. So one of the things that you might be able to do is to actually address that gap or that problem. So same thing with the others. And if we're going to the next one, after empathy, we have we defined it, right? So first is the empathy, and then we define the problem. That's why you have your design challenges. So based on the empathy mapping, you can redefine it more, make it more specific to what they actually need. And then what's next after define? Do you remember? So we have empathy, define, and what? IDA, that's correct. All right, so for the next topic, it's ideation, right? Um, so what I want to share with you is how to effectively brainstorm. So an effective brainstorming, it actually, it also affects the scenery that you have. So for effective brainstorming, later, if we have the activity, you have the option to go outside the room or be at the corner. It depends on what works for you. And then next is, again, choose a relaxed environment. Um, we understand that there are people who are extroverts, and I would assume most of the people here are introverts. So make it more relaxing or a safe space for people to be able to share their insights and knowledge. Because one person has an idea, another person has as well. So try to ask everyone. And then, again, you go back to empathize and define. So that's the ideation stage. That's part of your effective brainstorming. And let's go back again to the Holy, Trin 
the innovation trinity that we were talking about earlier. So we have the desirable, viable, and feasible, right? So what do these things really mean? So when we say viable, this is, or these are the questions that we have to ask. Does it have a reasonable chance of succeeding? Is it capable of producing a profit? Since this is design thinking and technopreneurship, we have to think of something viable that will be, or that can be turned into a business or profit for later. And then next is desirable. Um, this is where your empathy mapping or how you understand your customer falls. So does the customer want or really need this based on the problems or the challenges that he or she mentioned to you? So that's the human aspect to it. And then last is feasible. So how realistic you can actually execute or deliver that specific project. So does the technology that you want exist? If you're developing a software application, either mobile or web, is it easy for you to do it? Or do we have that technology already? And then next question is, can it be created and accomplished at a reasonable cost or in an acceptable amount of time? Again, even if you have a lot of ideas, you still have to think of, okay, how realistic can we execute these solutions for the customers? So for our next activity is ideation stage. So we want you to get post-its. So the first one is for you to write or draw as many ideas as possible on post-its. Don't filter your ideas yet. So we call it an exhaustive listing. Just share all your ideas, whatever it is, how simple it is. I mean, it may be the best idea. We're not sure, right? So keep on sharing with your teammates. And then next is, of course, you mentioned there are no crazy or stupid ideas. Whatever idea you have, may be amazing. And then mode of thinking is divergent. Again, ask everyone or ask your teammates. The more ideas to write down, the better. And be as creative as you can be. So just go in with ideas and then you can filter it down or do a short list after. Cool? So we have 15 minutes for this one.
three. Hindi, sabay-sabay kayo. Ito si ma'am, sa, sa team one, una si ma'am, si sir yung last. Ito sa team two, si sir yung una, si sir yung last. Okay, sa count of three, uulitin po natin kung ano yung ginawa natin ng una. Okay? Uh, ready? One, two, three. Go Ay, wait lang. <laughs> sabay, sabay, sabay kayong lahat. Okay? Uh, ready? One, two, three. Go! <laughs> Ayan. Ayan. Ah, ah. Okay. Ano yung ginawa niyo, sir? <laughs> Tayo, sir. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Salamat po, walang nanalo. Hindi po kami magbibigay ng mga premyo. Pero thank you sa effort. Hindi ko na po nakita kung saan po tayo unang nagkamali. <laughs> Pero thank you, energized kayo. At uh, one of our, or one of the universities did during the design thinking workshop as well. So what you can do is we'll give you another 45 minutes to come up with a prototype. So you can draw, you can use whatever materials that you have. I think we'll give more, some more materials at the back. Yeah, so you can use an illustration board if there's any. Wait, let's move this one. There. Um, for them, I think their idea was like a piece of bike, right? So they drew a bicycle, went around the university, and that's their prototype from one point to another. So you may be able to do the same or something else. Cool? So 45 minutes for the prototype. And as a reminder for the prototype, you'll present it later. So all teams will present and then we'll have a winner. Okay. But after the prototype, you have to test it and get the feedback of your customers as well. But we'll do it later. So focus on the prototype first. So enjoy! Sino oh, nakatapos? Ara, group one ka mo, no? Sino oh, pa? The rest, hindi pa? Group? Group ano ka mo? Nine? Group, group one, group nine, kag? Group seven, medj almost. Okay. Alright. So, let's do a quick review for the five phases of design thinking. So the first one that we did today is empathy. So we empathize with the people, the customers, or the interviewees that we had today. And then next one is we define the problem or the solution that we want to give or execute to the customers or clients. And then the next thing we did is we ideate, right? That's the Venn diagram that you did. You made an exhaustive listing of the ideas that you have. And then you chose one thing that you think you can deliver or execute. So now you're on prototype level. Is that correct? Yes? Okay. So, ay, naglo-load. Okay. So now after prototype level comes the testing. Or in other words, sometimes you call it validation or iteration. So now that you have your prototype, since we're running out of time, we'll continue most of this tomorrow. Your assignment is to actually 
talk to the same type of customers, meaning you go outside again after this session. So you can do it anytime tonight or maybe late this afternoon to talk to your target customers and present your prototype. Um, and then when you present your prototype, it's okay if you don't want to bring your prototype, you can just explain your solution. So when you explain to them your solution, you ask them about their feedback, what they think about this, or what they think about your solution. And then when you have that particular solution or the feedback from your customers, you make iterations or amend the prototype that you have. So that's the next step for you. And when you come back tomorrow, what's going to happen is that you'll present both the Venn diagram and the prototype that you have, including the iterations. So let's move forward. Activity three. So that's validation and iteration. That's your assignment or homework. And then the presentation format for tomorrow. So of course, you introduce your team introduce your customer, describe the problem. So you may reiterate the design challenge that you chose or anything that you made specific to it. And then present your solution so you can tell a story on how you were able to come up with that central solution from the Venn diagram, that it's feasible, viable, and desirable. And then you present to us your prototype. Plus, if there are any iterations or edits made based on the feedback of the customers or clients that you were able to talk to tonight. There. I know most of us had a long day, so we're going to end today early. And then we come back again early tomorrow. So the night is yours, and I think that's it for today. So thank you, everyone. We'll resume again tomorrow. Thank you.